Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Down the Slope. I am Liam. I'm taking a rare jaunt into the hosting slot this evening as, uh, well, was quite frankly, we thought we'd mix up. And there's only two of us tonight, so really it was a 50% chance it was going to be me, I suppose. <laughs> uh, Ewan, how are you? My, my compadre for the evening. <laughs> I'm, I'm good, mate. I'm good. Um, probably worth noting why they're absent. Greg's doing other things and Harry thought it would be wrong to talk about a game that he didn't watch, seeing as he's... Uh, was too busy rubbing shoulders with all the UFC stars on Saturday. Um, he looks like he's having a good, a good old time down in London some, now, isn't he? Some, some life he leads, eh? rubbing <laughs> shoulders with the UFC. Yeah, it was, not literally, he wasn't actually on the mats <laughs> rolling around with them. He was uh, there in his uh, PR and comms capacity, but it was good to see some, right. some pictures of uh, sport of a different kind of the weekend. I think, a, all them. I think he had a damn sight better Saturday than the I was watching that. Aye, well... Shall well, we that Guinness that you that Guinness that you had looked, uh, that you upped him looked rather tasty. Aye, aye, good pint of Guinness was had, but on Saturday I think that probably was the highlight, though. In all honesty, um, let's just get into it, shall yep. we? Because we've uh, got a relatively what I think is going to be a short episode tonight. We'll see if yep. it pans out being that way or not. But uh, we'll, we'll crack on with the, the weekend's proceedings. So. Hibs went down 3 uh, 1 at Pataudry, a bit of a familiar story, I suppose, in terms of results going up to up to Aberdeen for, 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 for Hibs in recent in recent times at least. Um initial sort of impressions, you and you were kind of on the on the on the Twitter sphere on Saturday dealing with uh, all the bits and bobs, the shenanigans yeah. going on. What did you make when you saw that team come out initially? Um I, I didn't realise that Macy's injury was bad enough that he wasn't going to be able to play. Um, mm. But to be fair, at the Motherwell game, I also didn't realise that Porteous had taken over goal kicks. Uh, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't realise that at the time. Um, so I guess that's not really a surprise. I'm trying to think what, what else did we have going on. Melkerson was up top, Jasper. Obviously, and Henderson dropped out as well, didn't he? Henderson dropped out for um, Rocky, which obviously I wasn't on last week. Uh, and I... But I when you guys were talking about the team, I, I'd said that I would have probably brought Rocky straight back in. Um, but I wouldn't have dropped Henderson. I know he did get a knock at Motherwell, so I don't know if that was a factor of it. But I would have probably dropped... Uh, oh, who was I? Who did I say in that group chat? I can't, I can't fucking remember at all. <laughs> um Aye, but no, the team was all right. The team, the team, the team was all right. If I'm being I think, I think that was a general consensus, wasn't it? I think everybody when they saw that, well, not everybody because I can't speak for everybody, but I think most people when they saw that team line come out probably would have had maybe a lot of that was based on the performance against uh, Motherwell the yeah. previous weekend. But a lot of people would have um, probably been quite confident that that team could go to Aberdeen and, and, and get a result. Um, we'll come on and touch on individual kind of player performances and and. The or stuff later of. on as we work through it, yeah, or lack thereof. Um, but shall we just maybe just quickly just touch on sort of the opening sort of 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes yeah. of, of the game? And what, what did you make of that kind of first first embers of the game, if you like? I thought we settled pretty well. Don't get me wrong, I don't think either team was on top, but I thought I thought we'd done all right. I thought early doors it looked like if we could get the ball in behind or do you know what? not even necessarily in behind see if we could just get forward quickly that on the break we were going to be able to cause them a decent amount of problems I thought them um, Bates and Gallagher at the back looked fairly fairly suspect um Joe Newell was putting himself about which I know I think Harry mentioned last week uh, after yep. the Motherwell game um I mean, I think he committed a good four or five fouls in the first sort of five ten minutes before he's even, yeah, before he even and, got his book in, and then and he he got booked. But Ferguson had probably already put a foul on Ferguson, who'd probably already committed maybe four yep. fouls of his own at that stage of the game. Yeah. I know persistent fouling something that we all get quite hot under the collar about, but maybe just a wee sense of injustice about that. I think so because then it does limit Newell a little bit after that when he gets booked because I think it was about the fifteen minute mark. You know, it was it was still really early in the game, but at the same time, I don't think you could. I don't think we can complain about Newell's booking. It's the lack of the other booking. You know, I think I think the tackle mm-hmm. that Newell put in the area of the park it was. Um, I just I just felt I know and we're probably getting onto this already, but while we're I just felt the ref was. I don't necessarily know if it, I know there's a decision that I do disagree with massively, but before that even, I just thought he was giving fouls for everything. Like, Aye. really, ev- like, you know, like, there was just no flow to the game. And I know the main, like, the 22 players in the park have to be responsible for that on both sides, but the ref plays a part in that. You know, there were so many little shoves and pushes. And, like, I think Port just 
breathed on someone and done the bottom right corner and maybe mm. it was a little push but I, I just didn't see why these things need to be fouls like I just uh, Alan Muir is a bit of a pernickety referee though typically isn't he and I know mm-hmm. that you, a player shouldn't have to necessarily play the referee but if you were playing devil's advocate there are only really seven or eight refs that yeah, should got regular yeah. game time in the top flight I think you should probably in some respects know, know what you're up against a wee bit uh, and we should be should be smart to it but yeah Alan Muir again you know, we'll come on and talk about some of the decisions later on in the game, but again, it, you know, he has himself, I think, created a couple of the talking points from, yeah. from the game, but we'll we'll come on and touch on that. Um, let's let's just get right to the goal. Um, so good bit of work, I think, from yeah. from 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 Elkerson initially, um, and and kind of creating a creating a bit of the space, and then finding that ball out wide for McCadden take us away from there. I think it's a really good goal. Like, I know it's an own goal, but. Josh Doig is getting right in at the back post from left centre back, and I think if Ramsey doesn't try to deal with it, then Josh Doig scores. Like, I think Ramsey can obviously deal with it better, but it's a good ball in. And again, I think Cadden has just put it into an area, but he's chose the right area ultimately from where he's been crossing it. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a really, really good ball in right to the back post, and he's sort of kept it within the sticks in that sort of sense that someone really just needs to get a touch on it. I want to say just before that, potentially, I think it was before the goal or just after. Mm. I think it was just before Jasper tried something similar from a set play. Um, yeah. And they're the sort of balls that you will score from because Hibs aren't, we're not, we're not a big team. I think we've seen no. that Motherwell last week. Like, we're not blessed with height. You know, like Melkerson's a decent height, but you know, he's, mm. he's still, he's, he's a young boy, you know what I mean? Like, uh, He's what is 18, 19 late. Like, we don't have pl- so the, the the quality of balls in do need to be spot on for us to score from them. And mm. obviously in the last two games we have scored from quality balls in, I'm sure. If we don't score in the next couple of games, then people will start saying another goal we did score was an own goal. But yeah, I mean ball, balls in the box that don't necessarily lend themselves to like stooping headers either quite a lot no. of the time. They are relatively like relatively low down, which I always think when you cross a ball and it's not like at head height, it always looks absolutely terrible when someone blocks it and gets yeah. away. But if it's at head height, it's almost immediately more acceptable for that to yeah. then be included by a defender. There's well, two that's... schools of thought in that, isn't there? Because ultimately yeah, a lot like... of teams don't want don't want the ball to be six foot five inches up in there. It's the comment, and it's like that's the thing. Like, you, you'll speak, we're all guilty of it, you know. Like, we've spoke about it at length. Does, is Chris Cadden putting really good balls in, or is he putting terrible balls in over the last yeah. like, six months? Yeah. And then it's like, if someone tries to drill it across the front post, but it gets cleared maybe at the front post, they'll scream, they'll say, Oh, you should have lifted it, or the striker needs to be getting across the front post, or like, you know, like all these, all these fight, like, ultimately, it's like everything in football, unless it works. You're not going to think it's good, <laughs> you know. Like, like that's like that is the heart. Like I try to avoid that. I think Cadden does put good crosses, and I think a cross can be good just without someone getting on the end of it. And I still yeah. think you can score for shite crosses. Like yeah. it could just it could you know like bounce a ball, um, like yeah. Hearts against St Mirren last weekend. The, the crossing was shite, but it deflected right into the boy, hit his knee, and went in. You're not telling me that all of a sudden that's a good cross, like no, no, no. <laughs> a couple, couple of things after the goal. So, so decent goal from from a Hibs perspective. You know, probably one that Aberdeen would would will go study and look to avoid. I'm sure in future, but then a couple of things kind of happened after that. A um, couple of challenges that were. You know, I think the McCrory challenge on you was probably the poorer one of the two. It's a yellow card, probably as a yellow card for me. Yeah. I think that's the right decision. Then another yellow for um, David Bates, essentially just kind of all in play. Yeah. Felt like at that point, although Aberdeen had possession, I still felt like we were probably just marginally the better side. Um, yeah, 100%, certainly, man. certainly box to box. I think we were the better side. Um, 100%. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Just like what I said earlier, that Melkerson incident where, where Bates got boots was sort of what I was meaning earlier. Like anytime we were able to get the ball up to the forward players fairly quickly, we did look like we could cause them issues. Um, and then I know, like just like last week, it's a freak. It's a freak incident that happens. I think Harry mentioned what I said at Motherwell. Like that goal only happens mm-hmm. to us. Well. That handball for Rocky is just as freak as that smacking off the boys' head last weekend. Like I don't know. Yeah. What did you the make way, of the, the penalty? Way, I mean, it's a penalty. Um, I think I think probably prob- prob- probably probably. Did you think it hit off his leg? Interpretation. Oh, I think it does clearly come off his knee, and and the, the ruling is supposed to be if it comes off his Aye. knee, it's not supposed to be a penalty. But under the previous interpretation of the rule, I think it was a penalty. I think under the current interpretation of the penalty. 
the yeah. rule it's, it's not a penalty um, but it's a it, it's one of those ones I don't think I think the touch it takes off his knee is, is pretty subtle in, I couldn't, in, yeah, in like, I, didn't, terms. I didn't see it at the time and then I heard Maloney's interview I was like like, probably wouldn't castigate the referee for getting that one wrong on that basis to be honest because it is subtle and actually it's only when it's really slowed down that you could see it um, but it is it's a penalty it's given Lewis Ferguson goes down the middle um, I always think if you've got the composure to go down the middle um, you're in the position to do it it's it's a relatively safe bet it's, it's yeah. probably the easiest bit, place to stick it um, in some respects you know I, I think goalkeepers are, you know it's, it's, it's not hiding to nothing for goalkeepers at all because Ultimately, no one's really expecting to save it. If they do save it, they're a hero. Yeah. I don't think either penalty you can really have too many complaints in terms of the finish because Dubrovsky doesn't get close to either of them, uh, nah. unfortunately. Couldn't I repeat his think... uh, heroics from against the, the Arsenal pre-season game. Hi. I think um, with a penalty as well, if you want, I'd be interested to see if there was any sort of statistician out there that listens in or that. Like, uh, Ferguson and missed his last penalty. I'm curious how mm. many times when people miss their last penalty they go down the middle. Go down the middle, yeah. Like, I feel like, it, my, like see, at the start of this season, it felt like we were getting a lot of penalties. And any time Boyle had a squiffy one, the next one got rattled in the middle. Like, I just, I'm curious. I'd just, I'd be really intrigued to see that. And, like, obviously, you know, I'm a Liverpool fan as well. And Salah missed a penalty oh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and then he got one at Brighton, smashed it in the middle. Like, I, I, I think there must be some train of thought there but do you know again though the, the thing just with the penalty itself it's, I, I say that it's like the goal against Motherwell the shot's gone fucking nowhere you know it's, it's going absolutely nowhere it, did it hit off a hips flesh or would it went for a corner it was it a hips flesh it hit off I had mm-hmm. the, the initial so. deflection but it's going closer to the corner flag than it is the goal it's just like, and when your luck's no in like and I, I don't know if we're allowed to say our luck's not like we played last weekend for like, eight nine mm-hmm. min- like for 89 minutes with an extra man but that coupled with the goal that we'd conceded previously at Motherwell just feels like I don't feel like we're conceding terrible goals you know like that's yeah. the thing like, go- I still feel like we've been okay at the back but yeah anyway anyway we get into half time and so the half times, yeah, the the, the, the half time show, uh, the <laughs> half time show at Pataudry is probably not the, not the greatest. Um, uh, just a wee, a wee, a wee sort of thing, just probably from sort of late first half, early second half. Besaywin, I think is how you pronounce it. Besaywin, yeah, yeah. Besai the the winger. Um, what did you make of his antics during the ninety minutes? <laughs> I flew, you know, right, I'll start it off by saying I think he's a decent player. But I think he looks yeah. pretty good. I think he looks like a pretty good pickup from Aberdeen. I think mm. it was like Glass would have signed him, but uh-huh. he's a diving we can't. Uh, Twi- um, more than one occasion, eh? on mo- Yeah, on more than one occasion. He, was, it, was it the first half he had the really bad dive over in front of the dugout, or was that the second half as well? I'm Be- not sure. Because he, ju- he, just, he just, I think it might have been second half, because I'm assuming, I think Aberdeen would have been on the attack, and it was definitely mm. in that half. But just total dive and it's like the ref didn't give the free kick so it's like well who come then like you look like and this I didn't again I keep going back to Motherwell but Jasper got booked last weekend and at least Jasper played a pass like I'm not saying he didn't dive but you know like it just but just after it was, it was just after the second goal wasn't it um, with Stevenson um, second goal ridiculous I uh, second, second goal I mean it's a difficult one isn't it because there's been a lot of, there's been a lot said about that you know, Alan Muir was ultimately taking the decision to send Porteous off and give a penalty. Um, there have been various different uh, interpretations of the rules floating about over the last couple of days in terms of what that should mean. And apparently, um, the, the true definition is if there is a genuine attempt to play the yeah. ball, then it should be considered uh, not a red card. And that's what kind of double jeopardy comes into place if it's a, essentially a professional foul and yeah, old language. Target and shot or whatever. Yeah, and, and it, then, then, it's, then, it's, then it's night and day. It's interesting because one thing that I was kind of wondering, um, both at the time actually in retrospect, I wonder about even more. Alan Muir does spend quite a lot of time between awarding the penalty and then making the decision to send Fortress off. And I just wonder whether or not there was some Discussion. information going into his ear. I also think, um, and it's not a slight on the Aberdeen player, I think it's maybe Connor Barron that's shaping up the shoot. I might, I might be wrong. Um, but he does uh, kind of go down somewhat theatrically. I know that obviously there's a tackle that goes in, but Aye. I think that maybe adds a wee bit to adds a wee bit to the scenario, uh, which ultimately then I think helps to make Muir's mind up for him when he does send Fortress off. I think we're probably both in agreement that it's not the right call and, and Moan no, said as such. Um, 
I don't understand the logic of the guy was between purchasing the ball and saying, well, right, so the ball never went in it. <laughs> whether, he, whether he sliced the boy that now, but I think the ball is there at B1. It's bouncing. They're both going for the ball. Like, don't get me wrong, he's in a disadvantaged position, but mm. it's not dan- it's not dangerous foul play. It's not I think that's is it dangerous foul play? Is that a serious foul play? Sorry, I don't think. Mm. Would he get if he makes that tackle anywhere else in the park, does he get a red card? No, no, he So the fact that the penalty's given, then it shouldn't be. That's my, that's my fault yeah. on it. I think that what leads up to it is a harp back to earlier in the season. I mean, it's a free header and Rocky's there, but he's not really doing anything. And we got away with it on the first instance. But the thing mm. is, I mean, the, the, the Maloney nailed it after the game. I, and I, I didn't actually necessarily disagree with anything Maloney said after the game. I think until Aberdeen scored, we did have more control of the game as much as either team did. And then the red card, the red card yeah. did kill it. Like, because you can go 2-1 down. That that can happen. And if he gives Porch a yellow card, he gives the penalty. Absolutely no issue with that at all. No issue at all. Like, it's a penalty all day long. But to send him off, it just kills the game. And then it's just so frustrating as well, because obviously you've got that Steve Conroy mouthing off the night before about Ryan Porches and the, was it the Express? And then... Hibs had obviously tweeted about some stats and stuff during the week and that like it's like it seems to always happen with Portress that any time and I don't even necessarily think it's on him I would if he had stood there and watched the boy put it in the back of the net you'd be more disappointed I would say personally yeah um, I think so too I think I think it's, uh, it's uh, you made some good points here I, th- I think ultimately probably just summarise it by saying it was just a really it's bad, just a bad, bad call. timing on yeah bad call but also bad timing on on, on he'd, be, he, he'd be in the Scotland squad ahead of Halkett, I think, today if he didn't get sent off at the weekend. I, just, I, th- I think I think on the basis that we're playing poor and friendly, he, he would be because he's because he's younger and yeah. he's, his ceiling is, you know, I don't think Halkett's had a very good season perhaps. I, I probably wouldn't argue with that, but nah, his poor chest ceiling is much, much higher in terms of where he can go in the game. He's been in several Scotland squads already, so there's there's continuity there in some respects. I know he's not made an appearance for the full team yet, but he's been in and around the set yeah. up enough times for it to be quite an easy transition. Anyway, I've got to say, I, I'll be honest, in one of my reflections, I was quite surprised at this point in the game, Dre Miller, eh, Dre Miller, <laughs> Chris <laughs> Miller. That's like a, a, su- a super a super version of Chris, Chris yeah. Miller and Jay Wright. Um, <laughs> Chris Miller's already come on for Jay Wright at this stage, and I, I, to be honest, I was kind of expecting... Um, Paul Hanlon maybe to come on at, at the back but he kind of seemed to go with a back three of Cadden, Bashiri and Doig which I don't think is a back three that we'll see play too many more times uh, for Hibs uh, no. if ever uh, it was it was an interesting move and, and you know credit to Moni because ultimately he is trying to still keep yeah. his attacking players higher up the park and make things happen um, but yeah I mean, it's, it's difficult really. I, I don't want to kind of go too deep into the rest of the game because it will just um, ultimately probably depress the two of us. But yeah. <laughs> Aberdeen, <laughs> Aber- Aberdeen ultimately kind of take control of the game from that point on, really. Uh, Hibs yeah. a man down, struggling, struggling to get back in it. There was a strike from Josh Campbell, very good strike actually, when Josh Campbell works a bit of space and gets onto his left foot. Um, other than that, really, not too many more incidents that we probably want to talk about in the remainder of the game. Nah, I, I, I think we're entitled to still feel a little bit disappointed by what came after the second mm. goal. I know you've got 10 men, but I think there was a few occasions where we did manage to work ourselves into decent enough positions. And it's confidence in it. I think I think that's the big thing. I think when I really tried to put a positive spin on things the last couple of days and it was like, well, we're, we're six unbeaten. But at the end of the day, it is now, what, 1-1-12 and 12 or in the league. And like, it is, like, I think players are struggling for confidence. And I think when you when you are facing that, so you've, you've, you've went 1-0 up, you've had a player sent off, you're now 2-1 down. Like, I think that in the vein of form we're in just now, it really was game over. And I know we've all seen it before, but like, I mean, last weekend, Motherwell done all right against us with 10 men, but... So it was a totally different scenario. And I think I was a little bit disappointed with the last sort of half hour after that. But yeah, like you say, there's I don't think there's too much you can do. And then the third goal is it's poor. You know, it's, it's a good finish for to for the boy. Does like, like to be fair to him, but I think the defeat rock is so flat footed, it comes straight across him and just I think he's just got to deal deal with it better. I think Rocky was quite poor, looked like a player that hadn't played for a couple of games, but 
I almost thought he'd come back better than he was before his suspension because of the fact that he, uh, well, was struggling for fitness, really. You know, I thought the break maybe would have done him well, and, but I thought he was quite poor at the weekend, if I'm honest. And if he was, and he's, he's taken his fair share of criticism, Bashiri. I think he's he, he's he's probably had enough over the last few days that we don't really yeah, yeah. believe him. On, but he, 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 he is a player who... Um, I think a lot of people have been saying it looks like he's caught a mistake in him and, and maybe just those those are the mistakes he had in him that he got out of the weekend. Yeah. Fingers crossed that's it for the near future because uh, we could do with um, him and him playing well over the coming games because we're going to need him. He, yeah. he, he doesn't strike me as someone who is overly confident with the ball at his feet, which is why I'm quite surprised that he's a Sean Maloney sign-in in the first place. And I do wonder whether or not there was a bit of oh, I know I recognise that name, can we bring him in? Because that's where we need players at the moment. Kind of signing, um, I'm, I'm just yeah, yeah. On, on the right of a back three for me, Ryan Poachers can play that role because he can play football. Um, I'm not sure Rocky Bashiri on the right of a back three is something I want to see too many nah. times because defenders will just start to leave, uh, sorry, defenders, attackers will just start to leave him on the ball um, because he, he doesn't he doesn't look great and he's yeah, young yeah. guy so maybe he can develop a wee bit maybe that's part of his game that's still to come on yeah. um, but I'm, I'm I'm a wee bit worried to be honest if, if that's if that's the, a player that we're seriously kind of considering for next season I think we I think like we're a bit of bother I'd seen a lot of calls saying that we shouldn't be taking up the option but I don't know if that's a bit stupid and a little bit premature. Like I, I tweeted after the game being like back in the team and could probably do it going back out. But that's just based on performance. But uh, 22, maybe 23. Yeah, he's, he's, st- so, he's still got lots to go. Like he's, but I think as well, if you look at the squad as is, he's probably our fifth choice centre half. Like If you're playing a back three, you're probably going to start Doig at left centre half. Hanlon, you're probably going to start Doig and Hanlon before him at left centre half. Mm-hmm. You'll probably start Porteous and Hanlon at the middle centre half, you probably start Harry Clark at right centre half before him as well. From just from the words that Malone has said about Harry Clark. Uh, you know, if, if if everyone's fit, he's probably fifth choice. Mm. And like I know the the, the Clark thing is all hy- hypothetical, I've not seen him play. But I don't get the impression that right now he would be a first team starter. So I don't but then that doesn't necessarily say that in two or three years time we had a way more playing time more coaching that he can't be a better player because we, we have seen that he can be a really good centre back as well like that's the thing he has just been a little bit hot and cold in the time that he's been here but yeah I, I'd be surprised if he was a first choice centre back next season if I'm being honest and let's be honest we're not going to be paying a, I don't think we're going to be paying a fee for a guy if he's coming no, in as a cover no. at centre half so I think I think I think you know realistically it's, it's probably unlikely but for strange things have happened there's been greater turnarounds listen I heard people tapping uh, Dre Wright for a contract <laughs> extension after Aye. the game against Motherwell on Sunday so anything is possible well, where, where do you Hibs, you've been you Dre Wright, have you been hmm? his most vocal supporter do you think he's doing anything near enough to get a new contract no not for me I think I think um, yeah I've been a supporter of his and I've wanted it to come good as much as any Hibs player I can remember in quite a long time but I think the reality there for me is um, he just doesn't have enough quality in the final third to play yeah. the positions that we're, we're looking for him to play there is an engine there there is there is absolutely some football ability his close controls very very good but when we're playing probably seven or eight of the teams in the league who are going to sit back and demand for us to break them down which is the games that he, you know, he's yeah, probably yeah. most likely going to have an influence in he just doesn't do enough in the final third to, to justify that for me. And I think we saw quite a lot of that on Saturday. It was quite apparent like that he just couldn't Aye. really... There was a couple of chances just before they went off, eh, where maybe just someone Aye. a little bit sharper in the final third maybe would have got on one of the balls in behind and created it. And I think maybe one of them he did even get... There was a situation where he did get on the ball and it just sort of died down as well. But yeah, I don't, I don't a, think he'll get a new deal. But there's, he's, there's he's, also a thing about what's the right thing for the player as well. Yeah, for me, um, it's the right I, thing for the player to play in an environment where you've got maybe 70-80% of the fans are on his back every single week. Would it be better for him to go back down south or go and play for another Scottish club um, and, and go and do his thing there? Uh, I think I think, I think think probably, to be honest. I, I also think that just by the very nature of how this season is likely to kind of come to an end, I think uh, I think there's going to be demand for quite a big squad overhaul in the summer. Um, yeah. And I think, I think the club have kind of already signalled that. If you read between the lines of even just going back to our 
um, chat that we had with Ben Kensel and Ian Gordon, which was like a month ago now, but feels, no, it doesn't know, seem it. feels like know. ages ago. It does. Um, uh, I, I think they kind of signalled quite clearly. Um, go back and listen to it if you want. Yeah, if you're not, if you're not <laughs> listening, yeah, just uh, it was episode 98, I think. This is 100 um, and something. They were, um, they, they were. I think, I think, being being honest, I think they were very clear that the, the, there was there were certain things that needed addressed in the summer, and they were very, very alive to that fact. So, I would I would imagine there'll be some comings and goings that we'll see. Um, yeah. There's other players. Look, there's other players who are absolutely doing some some great things just now. Um, so, Vesta Jasper had, a, I thought, quite a good first half, but again, probably drifted out second half a wee bit. Didn't really see a huge amount from him. Um, Melkerson. Not quite able to follow up the Motherwell game with a performance that yeah. was kind of on that same level. 19 year old centre forward didn't really get any service to speak of either. So it's maybe to I be think, expected. Yeah, I think with the pair of the, 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 pair of the players you just mentioned, Melkerson and Jasper, I think they're still, I still don't think either of them have got a full 90 minutes at the level that they're capable of in them right now. I don't, or at least we're not seeing that. I think at Motherwell, Melkerson tired in the second half and yeah, there was definitely a drop off yesterday, but more so Jasper. I think Jasper as well in both scenarios. Uh, pretty much, I've, I mean, the St Johnston game he looked fucked half for half an hour, and like mm-hmm. I do, feel, there is definitely a. I think the Scottish Premiership is probably a lot faster than lower league English football, and I can only imagine how much faster it is than sort of Norwegian second division, and even with maybe even from Miller in there as well, and how much quicker it probably is than than the US. Yeah. And obviously, two of the players are coming off. Uh, full seasons as well um, so I don't think you're going to see the best of any of the three until next season hopefully Jasper is still here um, but Melkerson I think as a fan base what we need to be wary of is not then because there's there's a very real possibility that he doesn't score in the next three games it's like you know like Hearts are good the two games against Hearts are going to be tricky so if he doesn't score against Dundee United you know, that, that is a possibility but I think we've seen it enough with Nisbet this season as well in this sort of style of play that we want to play, the, the players around the striker are equally as important as that player is himself. The two goals that Melkerson scored at Motherwell, unbelievably good, great movement from him, but also in a really good touch for the second one and finish. But both come from really, really good plays, from bits of play from Jasper, you know? Like, mm, yeah. if we... So, without the pieces of play and just generally a really good team performance at Motherwell, the 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 more flair players that top two as they were at the weekend are going to struggle uh, and you really do need to be getting the best from Cadden at right wing back I don't think I, I, I couldn't quite nail down what the formation was I think Stevenson was at left wing back in, in the first half then I felt like we almost changed to a 4-2-3-1 in the second half but um, I don't think St- for all we've Stevenson's been fantastic I don't think playing him on the left hand side in front of Josh Doig is the right thing just for the way the team want to be playing the now. Yeah, quite possibly not. Anyway, let's wrap up on the game. Um, finish, finish the one, the Siwin, uh, the much maligned the Siwin, finishes the finishes the game off ultimately as a contest. A very good volley, I think, um, from ball in from yep. from the wide right. Um, I'm going to be honest, I'm, and I've, I've I've probably been quite critical of the goalkeepers on this. Um, on this podcast, and I'm going to probably stick with being quite critical because I think Dabrowski's got to do better. Uh, it's right at him. Uh, I know it's right down the centre of the goal. I know it comes at him at a hell of a speed. It's a very, very good volley. But if Matt Macy concedes that one, to yeah. be honest, I'd be critical. And I've got, I've got to be critical of the goalkeeper there. I think he has to do better. He has to get something on it. I, d- I certainly don't think the weekend helped Dabrowski in his claim to be number one. Um, there was an incident in the first half at 0-0 as well, really early doors where Tam and Cliff were saying that Rocky had played a horrendous ball back. Now, again, I'm a bit, I've not watched sports scene on that and I doubt it's even on it, but Dabrowski panicked and he just sliced mm. out for a corner, like, sliced out for a corner, but like, like landed on his did, ass. Like, did make a very good save earlier in yeah, the game as abso- well. Absolutely, very good ab- ab- absolutely. But is it a very good save or is it a good save? Like, you know, it was interesting. I was, I was listening to the Terrace podcast and uh, they done their top 12 goalkeepers as they yeah, start to do mm. sort of for the position by position, and they mm. were talking about when they and sort of look at goalkeepers, they judge basically a really good save of if if the goal if the ball had went in the net would they have thought well, there's no much to give. like if he scores there I think you'd be asking questions of the goalkeeper probably 
Mm. I, I would say, but it's still a good save. It ended there. Where did our goalkeeper rank in that top twelve? Did he <clears> Dabrowski, <throat> Dabrowski didn't get in it, uh, but they both Fowler and Sked both said that probably with a larger sample size he would have, um, mm. and Messi was eleventh. Um, oh, that's not good. That's they, not good. And uh, is it two goalkeepers? Were they including like McLaughlin and so, um, Celtic's backups and stuff? McLaughlin was fifth because he was right. backup and. Right. But they both did caveat that with saying if because they'd seen a full season of him at Hearts, because they, they did say before that they factored in historic everything. If it had been a season at St Johnston, they probably wouldn't have had him as high because they've seen what he's capable of. And then Bain was in there, I think, but he was think, like 10th. It's interesting with Macy because Macy, I, th- I think I've not seen statistics have been updated, but, but JD Hibbs and I think mm-hmm. another poster as well. Maybe behind the goals or someone, someone like that, um, shared uh, some stats earlier on the season about all the various different goalkeeping metrics. You know, saves per shot, saves per mm-hmm. game, saves per clean sheet. Uh, you know, all, all the all the things you'd expect. XG uh, conceded against yeah, the XG. Yeah. You know, and how they're performing against the XG metric. And Macy was kind of ninth or tenth in they... most of those lists consistently. So I'm guessing if actually. If you're including backups and the sample size for the likes of Bain and McLaughlin will be pretty small. Eleventh probably sounds about right, based yeah. purely on a statistical basis. They they, they did also just uh, uh, Fowler definitely spoke more, and he basically said he was just sort of judge it because they do a lot of stuff on Y Scout, and so they go mm. back and watch it and stuff by the sounds of it anyway. But they he based it off a lot of things like like almost like volume of goals. Like they basically just done an offset of really good saves versus clangers. Almost, uh, and, and and that's the thing. Macy doesn't really have a huge amount of in the bank for me. He doesn't have like a but the, huge that's, that's saves that are really well, outstanding they, saves. Like he makes saves. Yeah. He, he, and unfortunately for Matt Macy, and the thing that if he was to leave up at the end of the season, I would remember most about him is I think he quite often gets beat by shots that look savable. But I'm not sure if they look savable just based on him being a goalkeeper or whether it's because of his height factor. They did say There's that. There's quite as well. a lot of going around them. Yeah. And um, they, they also do the offset saying that, obviously speaking about the general Hibs fan opinion of him and stuff, and the fact he had such a hard act to follow in Marciano. Had he signed, uh, had Messi signed for us 10 years ago, we'd probably think more of him, which is fair. And they also offset it with, <laughs> they also offset with Marciano probably made more errors in a season than Messi does, but he was also capable of, if you look at it from that error versus spectacular save, he was making them fairly regularly. Um, I think, I did feel like 11th was a bit harsh, if I'm being honest. Mm. I actually stopped listening to it about the fourth one. I've not finished it, but um, where did where did Ross Laidlaw come? Did he come above Macy? Laidlaw was twelfth. Laidlaw oh, was twelfth. <laughs> it was it was Laidlaw then Messi then I want to see Scott. I want to say Scott Bain after well, that. Um, well, harking back to the Ian Gordon and Ben Kensel interview, we did mention Benji Seagrass' name, and Ian Gordon did give us quite a telling look. I have to say <laughs> at the time, not that I want to spread any rumours. Is that early? Is that early? Is that an early prediction for I'm the transfer that you're going to get I'm right for? We're, we're definitely going to sign a couple of players from like Scottish because the other one was Niskin and I said, and he was like, oh yeah, we know about him um, at Dundee United. Uh, but anyway, we'll, Connor we'll Rowan might, we'll, might be a little bit out of reach now with, um, with that goalie squad at Tyne Castle, so. then getting up to so. the Ireland squad. I think I think you I think a championship club will look at pick him up, especially if uh, well, I think, uh, England should, should, I think should, Jim should Goodwin started. Out. I think Jim Goodwin started burning his bridges with St Mirren fans already. I think he said that Connor Ronan and Jack Almick would both be able to make the step up to Aberdeen. There's no dispute in that Aberdeen are uh, a bigger club than St Mirren, but aye, that was quite early doors he started already. Just because I think oh, I think, not, think not I, based I, on me, no, 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 aye, but. Um, Jack Almick's out of contract, so I think it was quite a strong rumour that I think he's signing a pre-contract. And obviously Ronan's down at Wolves, but I, I seen I seen that during the week. Um, I think it was like talking about goalkeepers. Joe, I think I think Joe Lewis is probably kind of on his way out of Aberdeen as well. Yeah. He seems to be a guy who seems to have faded quite yeah. drastic over the last couple of years. He was one of the best keepers in the league. Think back a couple of seasons, but certainly not anymore. I think so. I think as well. There's probably an argument for Joe Lewis, maybe similar to Paul Hanlon at Hibs around, like the length. I know he's not been there as long as Hanlon at Hibs, but just 
he was there when Aberdeen were flying and then this gradual sort of downturn over the last two or three years, because even when they were finishing fourth, when the Malays started under McInnes, he's been there through all that. And sometimes you just need a fresh face, I think. Like, I think you've seen that at our club. With the, like, some people just cannot stand the sight of Paul Hanlon. Even last season when the stats told you he was one of the best performing uh, set of halves of the league. Um, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say just at him. <laughs> at him right now. Uh, 39 minutes into the recording at G. Uh, no, nah, no, nah, it's good. It's good. Anyway, that's us. Um, I think I think we kind of wrapped up on the Aberdeen game. But there's a huge, yeah. huge amount more to say. Individual performances. I think we've managed to cover that as well. Um, anything else we want to talk about in the pub? We'll talk about the women. Talk about the women's yeah, performance. I think, I think that's um, kind of first and first and foremost. I think Good, I think good. <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, I think good. good. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know um, our coverage and our chat of the women's team and stuff—it definitely has has dropped off a little bit over the over the last few months. But um, just I think we've all got you've just we are moving house and we've all had sort of life getting in the way that sometimes even Hibs on a Saturdays <laughs> getting a bit of an ask. But um, really, really good win. Really, I think important for for Dean that they've just put back to back. Comfy, comfy wins together. Um, they were coming. He was kind of coming under. Yeah, coming under, coming under a bit of pressure. Finally, we'll talk about the terrace again. Craig Fowler spoke on the terrace uh, TV show last Friday, the week before the the Friday before we played Motherwell, saying that uh, he should get the sack. So, um, yeah, there was a little bit. I think there was definitely a little bit of pressure being put on him. Um, and. Yeah, two really good results, you know, a comfortable, comfortable win last weekend and then a nice dispatch in the hearts at the weekend and obviously they're back at Easter Road on Wednesday night against Part of Fissel. I watched bits of the game because it was on BBC Sport yesterday, I was, I was kind of double screening, I was watching a wee bit of that and I was watching, I think it was Tottenham West Ham yeah. I had on yesterday and, 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 and various other games late in the afternoon. Um, I, I think comfortable is the word I would use to describe it. it, it there was a point in the second half I was watching where it was literally just phase after phase of attack and Hearts were camped in quite deep, much in the way that they were the game that we went at Easter Road, where ultimately it was yeah. one team playing football and Hearts just trying to you know, hold on. You'd see they got four goals, just reward for for, for, for the performance. I think. And you'd see them pull and clear a wee bit as well. I think ultimately, financially, Celtic and Rangers have now kind of put themselves a wee bit out of, I know Glasgow City are very much still competing in that league, but Celtic and Rangers are kind of cool put themselves at a bit of a kind of yeah. uh, advantage, much as in the way they do in the men's game. Glasgow City are obviously still up there and fighting, but, but Hibs kind of feel like the best yeah. of the rest is kind of our place now in that league. And hopefully they can go on and consolidate that for the rest yeah. of the season as a bare I minimum. It, I think it was coming to a point there where there wasn't enough of a gap that you felt there probably should have been um, to, to the likes of Aberdeen and stuff that were just sort of coming in behind us. And... Like you say, we have sort of stretched that gap a little bit again, but the Dean could probably start to get he could start getting similar tag to what Jack Ross did, funnily enough. Like this season, I think we've only managed one draw against the three Glasgow clubs, yeah. and that's and I think that, and obviously last season as well, there was a couple of pumpings from Celtic, um, and, and Rangers, like, and again, like, uh, it's even more so in the women's game, I think resources huge, full time training's huge, but what happens is when you don't go and beat Spartans, the teams that you should be beating, if you're not getting the results in the bigger games, and consistently, then, yeah, aye, consistently, consistently, that, anyway, anyway, aye, okay, cool, so that's Hibs women, um. Other things we want to cover, I suppose. I mean, I mean, not really. A, a the stress of getting derby on. tickets, fuck me. The stress of getting derby tickets, we've got them, so we'll not talk about the stress. <laughs> we've obviously got a cup. We've got a cup semi final to look forward to in the middle of April, which will be very nice. Yep. Um, before then, obviously, we've got Dundee United at home, um, Harstein Castle. That you mentioned the tickets for that. It's a lot coming up. There's a lot to look forward to. There's big games on the horizon. Like we should all be very like. Do down the slope. Do down the games. slope series coming for all the listeners that want to listen to us, man. Uh, well, for for all for all of you listeners who want to tune in on a more regular <laughs> basis. No, I'll just talk about that briefly. Actually, just while we've got you. So I think um, we're planning on planning on getting some 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 guests on the, the podcast. Probably going to do sort of semi semi regularly, like once a month, once yeah. every few weeks. Um, and we're just going to have a bit of a chat about what are the kind of hot issues in the Scottish game more broadly. So um, not delving into kind of match reviews and stuff like we normally would do. We're going to, have to talk more about 
all the stuff that sits around the football, all the narrative, if you like. Yeah. Um, so the first first episode that we're planning is a bit of a, a special, a bit of a deep dive on the media in Scotland. So we're going to be looking at um, some of the real interesting characters and personalities. We're going to be talking about the the TV video and breaking that down. We're going to be talking about media versus fan media, all of those things. And um, plan to get on some 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 some. Z-list guests. Z-list oh, guests. I'm uh, going to Z list guests. Z list guests. Are we saying Z list in the world? Or because I mean, I think we're, I think we can maybe push it up to Y list of Scottish football, maybe. Well, I didn't want to use X list because then people might think that they're going to get something <laughs> on down the slope that they get, they get on other podcasts. But uh, no, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be uh, some, some really cool guests. If you want, to, and also, if you actually just fancy coming on that show, drop For us sure. on, have a 100%. chat with us, um, fancy lending your voice to that discussion. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of post ahead of time just to let you know the things we're going to be talking about. Maybe even get you guys to chuck in some talking points if there's anything yep. you think that you want us to cover. Or if there's just a su- subject yourself that you want us to cover and actually think, I think you guys should really talk about, I don't know, fucking referees because we don't Ticket talk about referees it. enough. We should we should talk about referees in more depth <laughs> and review referee performances. Uh, uh, by the do way, you know we should talk about Dermot Gallagher? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know we should talk about Dermot Gallagher's fucking performance on Ref Watch every Monday? Him and uh, Dermot Gallagher on Ref Watch, and what's the boy on uh, BT Sport that just fucking agrees with every oh, Peter Lawton. Peter, aye. Aye, it's hopeless. hopeless. <laughs> it's not. Peter it's just. Lawton, it's just Watch like the man it's, it's the most pointless segment in the show. Like because he literally, I don't. I think I've maybe seen him once say, "Oh, the Ref maybe got that wrong there." Like it's, it's, it's just a waste of wage, man. Isn't it? Steve Steve Conroy wage. and Dermot Gallagher are not going to be guests on any of our upcoming <laughs> episodes but they might come on in future who knows now nah, we've, got, we've got some plans ahead uh, we just want to try put out something different if it's shite mm-hmm. we probably won't keep doing it if it's good then it goes down well uh, we might keep doing it actually yeah. if it's shite we might just keep doing it anyway because fuck <laughs> it, not, I mean uh, we'll be doing this we'll be doing this, this for yeah. another two episodes <laughs> but no do give us a shout if you fancy joining in or if you've got some talking points you want us to discuss or, or topics you want us to pick up on happy mm-hmm. to do that Maybe planning doing some crossover episodes as well and getting some other podcasts involved. We'll see how that goes down. But yeah. um, maybe, I don't na- too much maybe the national there. team stuff like that. And who knows? It'll be probably what once a month probably. So we'll see. Aye. But aye, cool. thank you for having me. No, I know you've been a guest on your own show. It's been nice. Eh? <laughs> Just a wee bit of a conversation. This is like the, the specky and spicy special, but a very what we going for this week? Just, right, what we going for this uh, week? I don't know. I don't know, mate. I'm not thinking. I'm not quick enough on my feet to think of a cover name. But no, um, oh. look, I, I know that obviously the weekend wasn't great. You know, things probably don't feel amazing as a Hibs fan right now. But we've got a lot to look forward to coming up next month. We've also got a lot of players come back for injury as well. Potentially, Harry yeah, Potter, yeah. McGinnis back fit. Um, yeah, Paul Hanlon but back at the weekend. Starting to get a bit of a squad together again. It did, the bench did look healthy at the weekend. The red card. We didn't did. even talk about Josh O'Connor making his debut. I know, but because he's got scary that 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 squaffed shot. Come on now, compose yourself. <laughs> It's one of those uh, ones where if ever there was going to be a guy who was going to try too hard yeah. in that situation with all the narrative that's there. Yeah. Um, but let's hope he's just saving his first goal for another. hundred percent right thing to do, though. Hundred percent right thing to do in bringing him on in that scenario. I think. I think for in my opinion, I think some people might think like, "Oh, what are you bringing him on for his debut when you're three one down?" But that I think that's when they do it, like because what. Like, if you bring, up. Yeah, like because you don't want to be throwing them on when you need a like. I know we needed a goal we could have you know, if we scored, but you don't want to be bringing them on at fucking one one when you're chasing the game. Then he gets a chance and misses it. Like that, like that, like. I mean, if he scores it, great. But aye, no, that was the right. That was the right thing for me. As much as I can't imagine, Mister Christian Dodge is all that impressed. No, no. <laughs> well. I think we've uh, I think, I think, we've, done well. I think we've done well we've done well this evening we've <laughs> done well kept it to time um, thanks very much for joining us hope you enjoyed that we might be back next week we'll see if there's some there's something that's newsworthy to put out we'll yeah. certainly be back with uh, previews for the upcoming big games in April speak yep. to you soon cheers more the hips.